video today is going to be about how to troubleshoot a microwave and in most cases how to fix it or how to actually check if it's worth to fix it. So actually microwaves are quite simple, sometimes they don't heat up. It's nothing really too hard to fix and I think this video will help you guys to understand if it can be, if it cannot be. So let's start. Just before we start to actually uh, use the machine, uh, there is a disclaimer obviously, these things can kill you. There can be up to 4-6 kilovolts inside of these units at enough amperage to kill you. So if you're not familiar with, with electrics then please find someone which is more knowledgeable. Uh, I'm gonna try to go through the steps and try to make it as simple as possible. And let's start. So next day I got this model from Craigslist. It's faulty and so it's an excellent opportunity to make a video to actually see. So basically I can turn it on. Physically it appears to work but it doesn't warm up the food or the water or whatever you put inside. Now, if we check the power meter, we can actually see that the unit is drawing only 19 watts, 18.9 watts. So basically it's not even being powered up. Only the electronics and the fan. Okay, so this unit I've previously opened it. Should be fairly straightforward to open the unit. One thing and you might find into trouble is some of the bolts are security bolts. I actually cut these ones through to make it easier. Couldn't find my my security bolt set. Uh, so after that is done, it's relatively straightforward. Let's switch this off. So let's start by looking at the different parts and what they do. You will need a multimeter to carry out this procedure. And again, be very very careful with these units, there is a capacitor in there and these units can actually store energy even after the unit is unplugged from the mains. So that unit needs to be discharged. To discharge, the easiest solution is to put your multimeter into the amp setting. This will basically, it's got a shunt to measure the current, so it's basically a short circuit and then using both tips, don't hold the cables you're gonna try to touch both legs of the capacitor again attention because this can have 2 kilovolts on it and just touch them this capacitor is discharged because obviously it's not being powered up but if it's charged you will, you will see a bit of a spark the equipment doesn't need to be powered up, just make sure it's set for amps. Another warning, never try to measure voltages on the secondary side of the transformer. The, the, the output is roughly 2000 volts AC and when it's rectified, this circuit with the capacitor and the diode in there actually works as a voltage doubler, so the output can be as high as 4 kilovolts and the load. So, what we have in here then is the transformer and when you start fixing up this equipment you always need to make sure that the transformer is not physically burned or anything you cannot see any black spots or anything like the main indicating there has been a flashover an electrical arc or something this transformer in here looks fine to me then you need to see the other side as well should be using a torch, I don't have one in here just observe everything, the wiring as well, make sure there's no nothing black, nothing that indicates that there could be possibly a fault of any kind. Uh, if all of that is okay, then we can probably recover the unit. If the transformer is damaged, then you need to get a new one or you need to discard the appliance because there's nothing else you can do and it's actually dangerous to use it. Okay. This unit is in here is the magnetron, it's basically what produces the microwave radiation which heats up the water on your food. There's a fan as well, make sure that the fan can, can spin freely. Uh, there's a bulb in there, this one is actually bad, it needs to be replaced. You can take it off by taking this out some, somehow. Yeah, this one clearly had better days. 
that may need to be replaced. Okay, this is a replaceable type. Sometimes they all come as one single piece, so you have to replace the whole thing. This one you can actually swap it, that's fine. Okay, so the test we're going to make now is the first thing we're going to do is going to try to power up the unit and see if the transformer is powered up, if it's receiving power. Um, this is a digital model. Um, but the logic is the same. If the transformer doesn't receive any AC power, then either is a problem with one of these relays and commands the power, or it could be a problem with the timer if it's a mechanical one. So this is the first thing we say. Again, as I mentioned, never try to measure the secondary, only the primary. And we're going to put our multimeter into volt setting, and we're going to set it up to volts AC. With the equipment off, I'm just going to put the multimeter leads on there. Somewhere then they can actually be touching the connections. Well, doesn't look too good. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to do it with the unit power, but try to secure them before you can actually, you actually plug the unit. And this unit doesn't have any power going into the transformer. So that means it's probably some issue with uh, control cards. Okay, the other problem that you may find, which is more common, is this fuse in here. This is a high voltage fuse, this is not your standard fuse. So this unit sometimes if you put something metallic inside the appliance what happens is the magnetron train tends to draw too much current. So this fuse is going to blow as a protection. Do not try to replace this with an ordinary fuse. This is a high voltage fuse. For this unit it appears that the transformer is not powered up. So we need to find out where the circuit is going. So I can see that it comes through this relay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure if this relay is actually operating as it should. So for this test you put your multimeter into the ohm setting. Some of them have an option to do a sound. If they don't have, it's the same thing. You just need to check if it match, if it reads zero ohms or if it reads open load. So this relay, what it does is just a switch. So there's no AC current flowing into here. The AC current is interrupted by the relay. So now obviously the circuit, uh, the relay is off, so it's open load. If we try to power the unit up, the relay should actually be triggering, so this should be closed circuit now, pretty much as this. It's not happening in this case, so that tells us that the problem is somewhere on the control cars. Pause. So now since we identified that the problem is the, the control relay, what we're going to do is we're going to use a piece of string of wire, and we're going to shunt these two connectors in here. And what this does basically is this powers the magnetron. So before you actually do that, you need to put the microwave working because you need the fan operating. So I'm going to set it to two minutes. Okay, power level 100% and then two minutes. This will vary depending on your microwave. Let's hit start. And now, as we can see in here in the power meter, is actually measuring 18 watts. So let's try to power this up. Okay, and as you can see, immediately started drawing nearly 1300 watts. So this means that the magnetron is operating. We just let it go and work a little bit. Be careful with this thing not to touch anywhere. This is live with AC mains. Just let it operate a little bit more. Switch it off. And now we 
than the sea. And yes, our water is hot, 90 degrees. The actual surrounding temperature is 14, 15 degrees. So yes, on this particular unit, the problem was the output relay. So I'm going to have to replace that. Um, if it's not that, then you might have to replace the whole control bars. Some other cases, as I said, this fuse in here might be the culprit, so you might have to replace it. If you want to try to measure that, uh, please don't measure it with the unit operating. Always switch off the unit, short circuit uh, that capacitor, plug it off the mains. So it is now discharged, yes. Doesn't matter, always put in amp meter. Doesn't matter what setting it is, basically what we're doing is like a short, I could actually use a wire, but the reason I'm not using a wire is because if this is charged and I'm trying to use my wire and put my hands in there, then obviously I could be electrocuted, so. Discharge this capacitor and after that you can actually remove, take this cable ties in here, remove the the fuse. And this fuse you can actually open it. Just hit pause in there for a second. Oh no, no need to. Okay. So if you're careful enough you can open it. What you'll find inside is this fuse is similar to a spring. What it does is this is a high voltage. So close up. This is a high voltage. So this fuse in here then looks like a spring. What it does is once it breaks down, once it reaches the, the, the current limit, this spring is actually gonna pull apart. And this is going to cut the, it's going to avoid any arcing from, from occurring. And this is the, the difference between this fuse and an ordinary fuse, because an ordinary fuse, the filament just blows and that's it. But on this unit, since it's high voltage, you need to have something that actually pulls apart to extinguish any arc that may eventually form. And that's it. I hope you guys have found this video helpful and stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.